Hello everyone. I am Dr. Bijoy K. Thomas from St. Xavier's Institute of Education. In this presentation, I am dealing with a topic titled Enabling Skills. Two enabling skills dealt in this presentation are organizational skill and leadership skill. We know that the teachers influence to change their students' lives for the better. The best of them inspire their students toward greatness and show them what they are capable of. To be a great teacher, we must display enthusiasm, leadership, commitment, along with cognitive, psychomotor and affective skills. Do you think that the skills mentioned above only help an individual to carry out the task effectively? No, we know that along with the skills mentioned above, several generic skills are not directly linked to any particular job or occupation, but which lie at the heart of what we do in our work. These are necessary skills and higher order skills, both of which we need to reach our full potential. The question in this context is, what are these skills known as? Let me give an example to this particular topic. Look at the context of shooting an arrow. According to you, which case is the most perfect task? And you are supposed to justify it. Please observe it carefully and ready for your answer. Yes, we all agree that the third case is the perfect task. Why? Do you think that in the other two contexts, they carried out their task? Yes, they also carried out their task. But the difference is that in the third case, the individual carried out the task efficiently. We might have heard this term enable and disable in the digital context. When do we use this term? Definitely you know about that. For an app to work efficiently, we must enable its exclusive features. For example, options like allow locations, allow apps to access the information from our phone, etc. Dear friends, look at the above illustration and reflect on what is meant by enabling skills. Yes, I'm sure that now you can tell the answer. Enabling skills that enable us to perform much more efficiently and effectively. So for completing a task related to any profession, we need job or domain related skills. And for successful accomplishment, we need enabling skills. All have specialist knowledge and experience that define their job but we also need enabling skills to communicate effectively, collaborate and cooperate to achieve goals. So what are the most critical enabling skills that our teachers needs to perform day-to-day -day activities? Unfortunately, employers often neglect training and developing enabling skills because it is assumed that they have learned during education. Sharpening up your enabling skill is an effective way of giving yourself an edge. Some of the enabling skills are critical evaluation skills, critical thinking, reasoning skills, inductive deductive reasoning, and organizational skills. In this session, I would like to mention in detail about two significant enabling skills, namely organizational skills and leadership skills. The first part of this presentation dealt about organizational skills and the second part dealt with leadership skills. 
There are two viewpoints on organizational skills, traditional viewpoint and modern viewpoint. According to the traditional viewpoint, organizational skills can be defined skill sets that help people plan and prioritize their action and activities to achieve the goal. We shall look into the modern viewpoint also. What did you understand from these graphics? Does it restrict to planning, implementation and achieving the goal? What else can we do it with this puzzle? Yes, more scope of expanding the puzzles based on various dimensions that enable us to achieve the broader objectives of the task. Yes, look, according to the modern viewpoint, the organization skills is a set of skills to plan and achieve the goal and help the people to innovate the new dimensions from the existing one. Efficient organizational skills also foster innovation as they allow better planning of the means to implement one's idea. Let us understand this concept in depth. Let me introduce the term associated with organizational skills. The related term is organization. I had put up the dictionary meaning of the term organization. Then what is meant by organizational skills? Organizational skills are strategies or techniques used for organization. These skills are vital component in being successful employee in the workplace. Thus, organizational skills include soft skills and technical skills, which are brain-based. It has an interactive effect on people and one's profession. And it improves work productivity. It is a process of building habits and leads to innovative ideas or trend. Based on these skills, presence or absence, the individuals are divided into two categories namely organized individuals and disorganized individuals. This slide describes the nature of organized and disorganized individuals. Some of the characteristics of organized individuals are they're consistent in their task. They can locate and use resources efficiently. They are efficient in planning, aware of future goals and curious about innovation. At the same time, disorganized individuals are inconsistent in their work, weak in time management, face difficulty in developing a plan and organizing their thoughts. Thus, lack of organizational skills indicate a lack of executive functions. So what are executive functions? Executive functions are a critical set of cognitive skills, strong predictors of performance, and it is unrelated to intellectual ability. So people, those who are disorganized, they are not lazy. The fault does not lie with parents, teachers, or child's willfulness. However, they lack development or delayed development in brain function. Because of the brain's delayed development, the disorganized individuals lack executive functions like planning, task initiation, metacognitive thinking, consistency in goal-directed persistence, time management skills, and attention span. All these organizational skills are divided under broader category as internal organizational skills and external organizational skills. Some of the internal organizational skills are stress management skills, emotional skills, etc. Internal organizational skills involve keeping an individual calm in adverse condition and preparing with a proper schedule and planning list. External organizational skills help the individual to track and sustain work-life balance in the workplace. Some of the external organizational skills are planning of physical resources, resource allocation, etc. Let us deal with this concept of organizational skills in the teaching profession. There are narrow viewpoints and broader viewpoints. Narrow viewpoint explained 
organizational skill in the teaching profession under four different categories namely instructional planning instructional strategies assessment and professional growth in this viewpoint organizational skill is used by the teacher for the accomplishment of tasks related to instructions and their professional growth according to the broader viewpoint organizational skill in the teaching profession are under two categories namely teaching skills and behavioral skills teaching skills include classroom management course and lesson planning subject knowledge understanding your learners and learning technologies the second category is behavioral skills the behavioral skills describe different dimensions of the teaching profession it includes 21st century skills like creating and shared purpose being accountable connecting with others making it happen working together and shaping the future so based on the broader viewpoint developing organizational skills is an active and ongoing exercise it include understand the need of skill presenting the steps involved in the skill giving ample opportunities to practice the skill creating and using multiple opportunities for reinforcing the skill periodically assessing the degree of mastery of skills and all this process are supported with reflective practices let me conclude this topic with a question why organizational skills are required it influences the different dimensions of an individual it is an enabling skill enables the individual to progress in their task collaborate develop creativity reduce stress help them to do multitasking and thus they can progress in their life thus individuals overall progress enables them to unique in their task completion and develop the potential to lead a group to accomplish the task efficiently this behavior is known as leadership let me discuss the second part of this presentation about leadership let us discuss the leadership skills i have connected the term leadership as idea the term idea refers to four essential characters of leadership skill the four essential characters of leadership skills are the letter i denotes innovation the letter d denotes dynamic the letter e denotes enthusiasm and letter a denotes application so what is mean by leadership this is the ability to influence a group toward the achievement of broader goals of the task the attributes of leader fall into three major categories the three major categories are mental physical and emotional let us understand the meaning of leadership based on the theoretical framework there are organizational behavioral theories established to explain the meaning and concept of leadership this slide highlights some of the established theories related to this concept some of the theories are trait theory situational theory transformational theory and great events theory and most of the established theories states that the leadership is not a place it is a process it is not an inborn talent what does it mean yes leadership skills can be developed among individuals through a systematic training program only trait theory support the view that leaders are born and leadership is an inborn talent when we examine the above theories we understand the characteristics of leadership skills 
the leadership skills characteristics are it is dynamic that is based on the performance of an individual the degree of leadership skills varies the second one is the leadership skills can be developed through a training program the third important characteristics is the ultimate aim of leadership skills is not only accomplishing the task but also empowering the individuals and group there is no formal position in the leadership pattern and finally it is not the position given by any authority it is integrated with the behavior of an individual so the leadership process that translates vision into reality these competencies can be taught as the inner tools for motivating employees directing system and process and guiding the organization towards common goals that realizes its mission thus the leadership competencies include the leadership abilities visioning team building win win conflict resolution accurate quick situation assessment training or coaching and commitment to employee involvement these are the broader skills included under leadership for developing these skills a systematic training program is required the basic principle of leadership program is that leadership behavior emerges from within organizational values and skills are the cornerstones for the development of leadership skills among individuals so for developing leadership skills organizational skills are required that means the organizational skills influences the degree and style of leadership behavior what are the different leadership styles the leadership styles are broadly divided into leader centered and group centered this diagram relates the different kinds of behavior to different balances of power between leader and follower behavior at the top of the scale might be called as leader centered because the decision depends largely on leader's analysis of the problem interest experience and motivation behavior on the bottom end of the scale might be called as group centered because the action reflects all the group members assessment of problems interest experience and motivation the systematic way of developing leadership skills from within leads to the job satisfaction of an individual different theories supports the viewpoint of developing leadership skills from within theories like transformational theory great events theory situational theory and cart's three skill theory supports this viewpoint the great events theory explained that a crisis or important event may bring out extraordinary leadership qualities in an ordinary person the transformational leadership theory explained that people can choose to become leader by learning leadership skills this is the most widely accepted theory today in the organizational behavioral science in this session i would like to emphasize one of the theories that help us understand the development of leadership skills the name of the theory is three skill approach by cards the three skills approach focus on what characteristics make people more effective as the name mentioned this theory is based on three broader dimensions the three dimensions are technical skills human skills and conceptual skills
Let us understand this theory in detail. There are three dimensions in this particular theory. The three dimensions are technical skills, human skills and conceptual skills. The technical skills are basic skills, refers to the proficiency of an individual in a specific activity or type of work. After gaining the necessary technical skills, the individual should move into the next level as human skill. So what is meant by human skills? The human skills refers to being able to work with people. An individual can work with various people. The final dimension is conceptual skills. It refers to the ability to work with broader concepts and ideas, that is innovation and beyond the organizational goals. So my dear friends, if we want to improve ourselves to go beyond the four organizational setup goals, we have to take the extra mile to put hard work and utilize the existing resources and move forward from the basic technical skills to conceptual skills. This enable an individual to act as an enabler in the society. As a teacher, how can we develop the leadership behavior in ourselves and among our students? For developing leadership behavior, we should understand the complex nature of leadership. Four principles I would like to mention regarding the leadership development program. The first one, it is the program dealing with skills. Second, it is a program dealing with change. Third, it is a program dealing with vision. And the last one, it is a program enabling us to act efficiently in our community. Let me explain four dimensions of leadership development program. It is a program dealing with skills. This program help us to develop hard and soft skills. In other words, develop organizational skills. It is a program dealing with change. It helps us to act in the changing scenario of organization and personal life. It is a program dealing with vision. This program helps us achieve a broader vision of organization and helping the group members to empower themselves to act and achieve goals. It means leadership program should not be for self-centered development, but it is a program enable individual to change their society through their contribution. In other words, we can explain leader should act as an agent of social change. These are the basic principles of leadership program. The principles of leadership programs are know yourself and seek self-improvement, be technically proficient, Seek responsibility and take responsibility for your action. Make sound and timely decisions. Keep your people informed. Develop a sense of responsibility in your people. Train your people as a team. Use the full capabilities of your organization. Set the example and know your employees and look out for their well-being. Thus, in a nutshell, leadership is a process that enables us from known to self to known to others. This process includes assessing what knowledge, skills or abilities are needed by the learners, designing the training including identifying learning goals and implementation, develop an evaluation approach, help participants to set new development goals with broader vision and practitioner as reflective educators. Dear friends, let me conclude by putting this quote stating that leaders are made, they are not born. It is a dynamic process including hard work and hard effort. 
and I am sharing a link that can help you to assess your leadership skills. And you can deliberate on this topic based on these references. Thank you. All the best.